How do you decide who the victim is? Every day, Nigerians complain about the bias structure and sizing of infrastructure in cities across Nigeria. We're obviously peeved by these biases, and humanly so. We respond or react in different ways as an expression of our dissatisfaction and blatant abuse by powers we have decided to call unknown. In Baba Fela's words, unknown soldiers. We've been the victim for so long that we've slipped into the comfortable posture of constantly playing the victim, even when we are not. But the question is, who really is the victim? How do we choose who a victim is? And what are the rights of a victim? The nurses are harsh on their patients because they, the nurses, are victims. Poor emoluments, inadequate tools, uncomfortable environments, ETC, the list goes on. And the patients complain. These same patients that complain might be a teacher or a lecturer. He or she equally passes the frustration onto the pupils, students, or even the parents. In effect, produces unqualified bunch of unprofessional professionals for our dear nation, Nigeria. In October 2020, the nation witnessed one of the most coordinated uprising against oppression in recent times, NSAS. Police brutality must stop. Again, we are the victims. But then I ask, who really is the victim? The policeman who is being pilfered by the teacher who is playing victim. Or is it the policeman who has become accustomed to drinking the local herbs, agbo, claiming he's a lover of tradition, when in reality it is because he cannot afford to go to the hospital? Is it the policeman that has bought fake drugs and has lost a child? Is it the policeman that is poorly trained, lowly remunerated, dehumanized, and is giving all he knows to the job? No matter how inadequate this is to the society. Rather than praise our military, we bastardize them and constantly talk about how poorly they are performing when the truth is that they might be operating on the blind side. I mean, we've heard a lot of stories about them. Our failure to celebrate all the gallant soldiers who lost their lives at the battlefront yesterday will definitely produce self-minded soldiers who will not give their best to protect the nation tomorrow. Yet another victim. In the 90s, Igbos were tagged with 419. Rather than tackle the menace, we tribalized it. Now, Nigeria is seen as a country that celebrates 419 kind of smartness. Nigeria played the victim and threw a tribe under the bus to save face. We're currently plagued by a different kind of terrorism. Again, we're playing victim. We've tribalized it, Fulani headsmen, and accept the terror. We expect the terror to go away. Rain, rain, go away. Come and rain another day, like that nursery rhyme. The victim cycle never ends, and that is our problem as Nigerians. Every Nigerian needs to know that he or she is not a victim, is not rather more a victim than the other. It's high time we started seeing ourselves collectively as victims, because that is the only way we can get a solution to our problems. Let's analyze it properly. A teacher fails to give his or her, his or her best in class. He organizes extra classes to make more money. Her tool is the pen. He or she is the victim. A doctor fails to turn up at the public hospital and redirects you to the private hospital just so that he or she can make more money. In the process, the private hospital, or the public hospital rather, becomes a slaughterhouse. He or she is a victim, so they have to react. The bus conductor hikes the transport fare at will, depending on his mood. He can decide to blame bad roads or any other thing. All these people use their tools to make an extra living. Why? Because they are victims. What are the tools of the policeman? What are the tools of the soldier? What are the tools of the civil servant? After all, we're all victims. Not a victim in Jesus' name. <laughs> I find every spirit of victimism. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, Kadi, I, I really, I really loved. I, lo I loved. I loved listening to you. It was really, really impressive because it came from a Nigerian angle, which is kind of rare to see these days. We, I agree that of all tribes in Nigeria, which are more than 200, two ethnic ethnicities in Nigeria, which are more than 250, every one of them is marginalized. 
exactly. and that is what we do not understand in this mm -hmm. country. Our being is always to pick on who we think because we do not understand his culture. We feel this is this is negative. This is right. Mm -hmm. This is this. And for the purpose of this conversation, I'd like to bring something up. I was opportune to see something years ago, and if Nigeria had dealt with this years ago, we would not be in this problem. Mm. So there was strife in, of course, um, Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. And it was reported to Nigeria that, you know, the executive in Abuja should take action mm. because our borders were porous. And these were people who carried guns. And also, they noticed a, a deforestation yes. of okay. Zamporno, Zamfara, Katsina, Yubi, which are all today flashpoints. This, this report was more than 10 years ago. Nothing was done about it. Our borders have been left porous. And most of us, because of political affiliations, have invited people from outside the country who are not Nigerians to come into the country and perpetrate havoc. Mm -hmm. This goes down to even, there is nobody not guilty of this. This goes down to even within the Ife Modakeke crisis, mm -hmm. in which people were hired from outside Nigeria to fight these wars across each other. Mm -hmm. The Jukun, Tiv, yeah. they did the same thing. We are all guilty of this manner of approach. The average Nigerian doesn't like strife. We love Wambet too much now. Okay. If you want to see a country that has problem, I'll give you an example. When India and Pakistan were together, there was no intermarriage. Mm. No, they made movies about it. There was no intermarriage. Mm. Nigeria, we still intermarry. The only things we don't agree mm -hmm. with are when it comes to politics. Uh, politics. And the truth is actually resources that we do not lay our hands on. Nigeria mm. is too rich to be a poor country. Yes. Yes. And we have refused to handle that. And because of that, we have sold out our nationhood. Mm. Most of us do not think Nigeria is, is, is an identity. We all look at ourselves as Yoruba, Igbo, yeah. Hausa, yeah. Tiv, mm -hmm. Ibibio, and, and whatever, which is wrong in real context. Mm. A, a, niche, a country is a territorial boundary. A nation has a unified direction and ideology to which it seems. I'm one of the proponents saying we should try something. I'm not saying exactly this, but we could like make our national lingua Pidgin English. It might unify us more than we already are. Mm. That's my take on things. I, I do agree that Pidgin English, English should be not, not Queen's English. Not, yeah. Yes, I yeah. agree. And I also agree that if we take out, just from what Kunle is saying, take out that state of origin. Mm. And become state of residence. And state of residence, that's fine. That's that unifies us. So yeah. we all are in a geographical location. We are all from here yeah. because we live here. That's it. Being victims means we should be more empathetic toward each other, show some more compassion and respect mm. for each other mm -hmm. because we're all victims of one Victim thing or the, the other. other, whether planned or, or unplanned. Not. The mm -hmm. thing is, many times when we think of ourselves as victims, we, we think someone somewhere is sitting and trying to victimize us. It. It's not always so. Mm -hmm. It's just that... It's indirect, many, in fact, more times than not. Yeah, Someone yeah. is just trying to protect themselves. Like the doctor who wants private practice for more money, for more money. is not trying to become, create a slaughterhouse. Yes. He or she is just trying to protect their family. Mm. So it's a cycle of us hurting each other indirectly and yeah. yes, sometimes directly. Okay. So compassion and solution drive. What mm. do we do? do yeah. You know, like, like you rightly said, compassion. A lot of us have lost what you said. We've lost that love of nation or even love of self, I dare say. Love of people. Yeah. It, it, mo I dare say more than 70% of Nigerians, if, they, if we were to give them an opportunity today to choose another country, they will gladly, gladly. I, I was on radio in Ghana. Many also because year. they don't know better about of course. The other countries. Yes. yes, and that's what we're talking about. So they've seen themselves that we are at the receiving end. We mm. don't know blah, blah, blah. And they, you know, I was on radio in Ghana when the NSAS thing came on. And I'm an advocate for Nigeria wherever I am. Mm. And the guys, the presenter made a mistake and asked me a question. So how does it feel to hear people talking about your country in this manner? And it was one of the leading radio stations in Ghana. I was very excited when he asked the question because it was an opportunity for me to lash at them. <laughs> so I made, yeah, I made, I made them know it's that, not that, the people. That's very nice. You know what I mean? Then, right? <laughs> so that it's not the people's fault. You know, because at the end of the day, so many great things have happened in Nigeria this year. Mm -hmm. You haven't reported it this way you're reporting this NSAS thing. Yes. 
you don't even have those facts. Exactly. So you, whatever I give to the people is the song they'll sing. Any music you play to them. And the guy kept quiet. But while I was busy defending Nigeria, of course I said it was a bad thing that happened, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have happened and all that. While I was busy saving the face of Nigeria, a guy called, not just one, a lot of them, but one that stood out for me, insulted me on air, and told me that I'm one of the problems of Nigeria, I'm with the government, and that he was even <laughs> until the end such thing happened, it was about changing his nationality mm -hmm. to a Somalian. Okay. They would prefer to be a Somalian than to be a Nigerian. Good luck to him. And the presenter was looking at me like this. Mm. You say your country, blah, blah, blah. And you see, that's the challenge we have, that we see... He was a victim. He was a victim. Yes. And he's pouring it out on everybody. On everyone. And you see, we, we, we see Nigeria as a place where I have an option. I could check out. I could go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't owe anything to this country. Listen, things happen in Ghana, in Togo in Burkina Faso, I can talk about countries in West Africa, that are equally terrible. Under, just during this COVID, there was a government in a West African country that told the people were spending about $250,000 daily feeding people. Mm. And they said, the people said, okay, bring us the proof. And they showed people in like two or three parks scampering for food. Mm. And like, so are these people, can you feed these people with $250,000 in a day? People still. But you know what? While you're busy insulting them, or they are busy fighting their government, mm. you, a foreigner, attempt to insult their president. And you'll be reminded not that you're Ghanaian, uh, not that you're Nigerian. They're not allowed to do that. It's our joke. It's our joke, exactly. <laughs> so to, we to, don't to see take that. ownership to mm -hmm. us, especially us here as parents, yeah. it starts with us at home. True. I hear parents say things like, hey, don't, sh don't teach your, neighb your neighbor what you know, because they'll take what you know and add it to what they know, and then they and become better, better than, than you. you. That is institutionalizing division <laughs> and victim it. mentality. Mm -hmm. So if we will start by teaching our children to say, everyone is your sister, is your brother. Allow somebody else step in before you. doesn't take anything away from you. Teach that person what they don't know. It doesn't take anything mm -hmm. away from you. In fact, it reinforces well, your you knowledge. Exactly. I found it weird when I, I asked the teacher to allow my son teach his classmates more in primary four. And... Some other parents are like, why are you doing that? You want them to not be better than your son? And I go, no, 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 no. We win better when we are all winning. Well, that's I'll, I'll, I'll give you a life example. Yes. People normally assume that with my experience, and of course political parties and running for office, that I actually know politics a lot, lot well. Because I get to be part of the training and teaching of students within the Electoral College. I can tell you that my growth within the last one year in politics is exponential. Yes. Things, I, because I keep... Because when you teach, yeah, you become better. I teach, I become yes. better. Yes. I become far better than you I actually was. Better. And I don't know why we don't understand that. And there's one key thing we need to understand in Nigeria. I think one of the things that, bought, two things that bother us are tribe I and religion. Pick, I would put something... In fact, you know what? Let me just make this point here. When in church, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, mm. the leader says, tell your neighbor... I don't care what you came for. I came to be blessed. That in itself is already causing a divide. You were about to say religion and. Mm. So mm. if in the religious house, I am saying to you, Kayode, I don't care what you came for. I'm saying to you, mm. Kule, don't friend. touch me. Oh. Me, I came here for my own blessing. We're already saying we don't care mm. for each other. Mm -hmm. In the same place where we're supposed to be saying, look, I came here for your blessing and mine. So how do we walk out of that place? Which is adding to what you were saying. Please go ahead. Uh, so um, I feel, um, like for me, I, I consider myself a little bit privileged in Nigeria. Uh, well, I, uh, my dad Muslim, my mom Catholic. So I was raised with both religions. And unlike other people, I finished both holy books and I had a choice. So today, most people cannot tell my religion. Uh, we can't. Most we need people, to know. That's the thing. It's a need to know basis. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I noticed that even on social media, just because somebody sees the name, and sometimes, you know, I get to interact, and somebody sees the name, Lawa, Lawa. which is my son's name, they will tilt towards me, not because of the point they think I'm making, but I can almost tell the from the name where, yeah. averagely, from the name where you tilt on a mm -hmm. debate based on you would rather associate with okay. this or associate yeah, with that. Yeah. I keep saying this. Our institutions need to become 
actual institutions. Our institutions need to become actual institutions. Well, yeah. our institutions need to change everything. We need to move on. We need to stop being victims. We need a constitutional referendum. We need so many things. But as we all know, time is never on our side. Uh, he's never a friend on this program as well. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, join us on Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to Plus TV Africa.com forward slash the Advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, remember that the important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. Bye for now. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.